welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you our 2011 NFL season preview. We're taking a look at the AFC West. So let's just see who I have finishing fourth in the division. Looking at the Kansas City Chiefs offense, I have to start with quarterback Matt Castle. It is up to him this year to take the next step. He's the big piece of this offense because there's a lot of talent offensively for the Kansas City Chiefs. They added wide receiver Jonathan Baldwin, from, a rookie from Pitt. Also bringing a guy in Steve Bresson from Arizona. They have two talented tight ends in Tony Moriaki and also Leonard Pope. So there's a lot of talent in the passing game for him to be successful. He just can't stare down those wide receiving targets and has to make sure he spread the wealth outside of the Wayne Bow to get everyone involved. You look in the backfield, the ground game is there for these guys to be successful. Jamal Charles had an outstanding season last year. Thomas Jones, a heady veteran, one of my favorite players in this league. And you also toss in Dexter McCluster, who's a versatile type of guy. So there's a lot of offensive pieces for Castle to be successful. The big question is the offensive line. You get rid of a, a guy in Brian Waters, who I think should be a Hall of Famer, and you bring in other guys. So how well can that offensive line get together and piece together to have some success to be able to block up front for Castle in a running game? If the offensive line can protect up front, I believe the Chiefs have enough firepower in the skill positions for this offense to take flight. Let's move over to the defensive side of the football. They run a 3-4 defense, do the Chiefs, and up front they added Kelly Gregg, a guy that's a very underrated nose tackle that's going to help replace Ron Edwards and do a great job up front. Glenn Dorsey is going to take the next step, I believe, and rookie Allen Bailey is country strong, so look for him to help out in a sub package for the Chiefs. Now moving to the linebacking core, I like what they have. They bring in Justin Houston. If he can get his head in the game and get up to speed, I think he's going to be that outstanding pass rusher opposite of Tom Bali, but right now Studebaker holds that down. Studebaker is an outstanding player. You see this guy right here, Derek Johnson, excels in pass coverage. So I like the Chiefs linebackers. Tom Bali is a sack match. He's going to get his sacks. He's going to get double digit sacks again this season. I think they also have the best secondary in this division. You look at guys like uh, Eric Berry, Brandon Carr, Brandon Flowers, and also Kendrick Lewis out of Ole Miss. So the secondary is fine. The pressure is going to be there. Defensively, the Chiefs are not that bad. So it's all it all falls on Matt Castle. If they can continue to score points offensively, the Chiefs have a defense to get to the playoffs. Next up are the Denver Broncos. You look at Kyle Orton, the starting quarterback. I would rather go with Tim Tebow, but that's just my opinion. I think Tim Tebow is the winner and brings a lot more to the table. But Kyle Orton is going to help you out in the passing game. He's not going to take that extra guy out the box as a Tim Tebow would as being a scrambling quarterback. But Orton is a heady veteran. He's not going to put you in any bad uh, situations. But Tim Tebow is a guy I think that should be the starter. The Broncos team just looked a lot better with Tim Tebow back there. And you look at the ground game. No Sean Moreno is a guy that I really like. Is a classic feature back one cut runner get downhill watch how well he improves this season the biggest question is the offensive line they got ryan clayton who's a stalwart but they're going to start a lot of young guys on that offensive line jd walton out of baylor and also you're looking at zane beatles out of utah so they start a lot of young guys so that has to be the biggest question but you look at the receiving core lloyd has the best hands in the league decker is a guy that can catch well and eddie roy is a guy that can make you miss in the phone booth so overall Denver has some talent offensively. I just have questions about that offensive line and whether or not they should start Tim Tebow at quarterback, but Orton is a guy that can win for you. As bad as the Broncos defense was last season, I think they've improved in that aspect. Von Miller, the number one draft pick out of Texas A&M, is going to bring some pressure from the linebacking position. You look at Elvis Dumerville, getting him back is going to be huge. This guy is the best defensive end pressure-wise outside of Dwight Freeney. And you look at the rest of that defensive line, the question is up the middle, but I like the addition of Broderick Bunkley to help bolster that, that defensive tackle position along with Kevin Bickerson. Now, you also look at the linebacking cores, DJ Williams, Joe Mays, those guys can play the rookie. Nate Urban is a guy that may see some time down the line, but I like Mario Hagan as a depth guy. The secondary, as long as Champ Bailey is still up and alive and kicking, he's going to be an outstanding corner. Paris Cox is a depth guy. Can he get his act together on, off the field to be productive on it? But I like the free safety. Raheem Moore, they drafted out of UCLA. This guy's going to be a true ball hawk. And they have a lot of solid depth guys back there. Keep an eye on Saquon Thompson, who had an outstanding rookie season. But I like what the Broncos are, are doing defensively. John Fox is going to help that team go in the right direction. Look for them to concentrate more on the running game. And defensively, you know they're going to be sound because Fox is a defensive coach. At number two, I have the San Diego Chargers. Talking about Phillip Rivers, we're witnessing one of the greatest quarterbacks 
in the modern era. This guy doesn't get mentioned with the Brady's and the Mannings, but he should because he is out. He's an outstanding passer in the mold of a Dan Marino. I like the way he plays the game. He plays with fire and passion, and that's what the Chargers need. He does have two outstanding targets to throw the football to in Malcolm Floyd and also Vincent Jackson. Both guys are over six feet four. So they just as tall as Rivers. So that's always a, a good thing to watch. He sees these guys coming out the huddle. The two good tight ends in the future Hall of Famer, Antonio Gates and also Randy McMichael. So the passing game is solid. Is this guy right here that has to step up and be consistent as Ryan Matthews? Can he hold on to the football? Can he stay healthy and, and avoid the nicks and bruises? Because he's an explosive player. If they can get the balance going with the running game, as well as that outstanding passing game, the Chargers are a dangerous team to beat. The offensive line is very solid. I like their left tackle and Marcus McNeil. They keep Rivers well protected. So the O-line is there. The skill positions are there. The biggest question with the Chargers has been consistency. Can they remain consistent for 60 games? That's the only question I have about that offense. The Chargers need their two young defensive linemen to step up and help out Luis Casillo. You look at the rookie defensive tackle, Corey Lugit. He has to come in and help stop the run. And also Cam Thomas, second-year guy out of North Carolina. Those guys have to step up and help out that defensive front in order for the, these guys to stop the run. Now you look at the linebacking core. Never a doubt in talent in the linebacking core. Sean Phillips is the star of that unique 11 sacks last season. The need for Larry English to step up and hold up to his lofty first round grade. That he, well, well, that's what he drafted him in the first round. But keep an eye on Donald Butler to help out on the inside. Second year guy out of Washington. I like what they bring to the table. And they also brought in to Kale Spice, a very savvy veteran that's going to help out on the inside. The secondary, I think, are is very aggressive. Antoine Kaysen is an outstanding corner out of Arizona, but you also look at the heady veteran Quentin Jammer and the safety that they brought in from the coach Bob Sanders. If he can stay healthy for more than eight games, this is an outstanding secondary to team him up with Eric Weddle, who is also a guy that's always around the football. So there's a lot to, a lot to like about the Chargers. The thing with San Diego is consistency. If they can be consistent on offense and defense, the Chargers are a Super Bowl team. They just haven't put it together yet, which is why I got these guys finishing number two. At number one, I have the Oakland Raiders. Let's talk about their quarterback situation. Jason Campbell is a guy that I really like. Very solid player. Heady veteran. He's going to make the right reads and the right throws. His problem is holding the football a little bit too long, which, which leads him to get sacked, fumbles, and himself getting injured. So he has to speed up his release, speed up his decision making, and get rid of that football quickly. But you look at the guy they drafted in the supplemental draft, Terrell Pryor. I like his prospects as a quarterback. He is going to be a quarterback. I can't stress that enough. Right now, he's already better than Trent Edwards and Kyle Bowler. Those guys can't hold a candle to what Pryor brings to the table. So he's going to be an outstanding prospect for the Raiders. But we know the Raiders hang their hats on the ground game. McFadden in the backfield provides explosiveness. Bush, at his size, provided explosiveness. But you also look at the rookie, Taiwan Jones, out of Eastern Washington, Washington, provides a lot of speed at that position. So the Raiders are stacked in the backfield. Now, the receiving core is explosive now. You bring in a guy like Jacoby Ford last year, the guy that was a number proved to be a number one threat at the wideout position, team him up with Lewis Murphy and also the rookie from Tennessee, Denarius Moore. They have an explosive bunch that can catch the football and tight end. Yes, they lose Zach Miller, but they bring in tight end. Uh, uh, Kevin Boss from the Giants so the Raiders passing game is going to be solid the O-line is one of the more underrated O-lines in the league as far as run blocking is concerned if they can improve on their pass blocking the Raiders offensive line is going to be solid I like what they bring to the table and Stephen Wisniewski the rookie out of Penn State Jared Vald here last year out of Hillsdale and guys like Joe Barksdale and Bruce Campbell so the Raiders offensive line is very solid Defensively, I like what the Raiders bring to the table. They blitz a lot and they play a lot of man, which causes them to get gassed in the run game. But the defensive line is solid with Houston, Kelly, Richard Seymour, Matt Shaughnessy. Those guys can get after the quarterback. Linebackers, they have a future star in Rolando McClain and an outstanding player in Cameron Wembley. And the secondary, even though they lost uh, Namde Awesome, while they still have a talented secondary with Chris Johnson and Stanford Route. And you look at guys like Michael Huff going to be the safety and Tyvon Branch, another guy that's a very solid tackler. But let's be honest, the Raiders have the special, the, the best special teams in the league with Shane Leckler and also Sebastian Janikowski. So that's going to give that defense a chance to be successful and keep that offense to scoring points. Because once you cross the 50, Janikowski is within range. So overall, you look at this Raiders team. They swept the division last year, and there's no reason why they can't do it again this season 
and they have a favorable home schedule. So look for the Raiders to win those games that they lost last year, those close games, and get to the playoffs for the first time in a long time. For more NFL season preview videos, visit footballgameplan.com slash NFL or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan. And listen to the Football Game Plan radio show, which airs Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time at blogtalkradio.com slash footballgameplan.